Hey everybody. In this lecture, I'd like to talk about capacitors, continue our discussion of capacitors, but discuss what happens when you put a dielectric in between the plates of the capacitor. Now this skips ahead a little bit to chapter 10, um, where they talk about material properties in electric fields. Um, but uh, I thought it was important to talk about it now while we're talking about capacitors. Okay, so what is a dielectric? Well, a dielectric is a non-conducting material that is most often discussed when you're talking about putting it between the plates of a capacitor. And the reason that you might want to do this, well, there's multiple reasons, but one of the main reasons that you might want to do this to put um, something in between the capacitor plates is because it increases the capacitance. Now, some common dielectrics include various plastics, wax, paper, rubber, glass, etc. Now, the new equation is when you have a capacitor with a dielectric, its capacitance C becomes kappa times C naught. Now, C naught is the capacitance of the capacitor without a dielectric. And so that you can see that if kappa is a number that's greater than one, then uh, the capacitance increases for that capacitor. Okay, so it increases by the factor kappa if the dielectric completely fills the region between the plates. Now this kappa is a material property, okay, so it depends upon the type of material that you put in between the capacitor plates, more about that later, and it's called the dielectric constant of the material, okay? Now I'm saying kappa, this is the Greek letter kappa that's most often used. Um, it's not another K, but I know it looks like a K, and we use K for everything, and I'm sorry about that, but that's just the way it is. Okay, so if you have a capacitance increasing by a factor of kappa, then this would mean that, for example, for a parallel plate capacitor, that the new capacitance would be kappa times epsilon naught times A over D. And here, of course, epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 in SI units. A is the area of the capacitor plates, and D is the separation in between the plates. Now, you see here that, in theory, you could shrink down D to make a really large capacitance. But in practice, there's a limit to how much that works. See, what happens in a real capacitor is that if you try to shrink it down too much, um, and then you apply a voltage in between the capacitor plates, you'll get a spark in between the capacitor plates. In other words, it really won't be an insulator for very long, and it'll spark, and it'll short out, and that ruins your capacitor. Okay, so D is limited by the electric discharge that could occur through that dielectric medium that's separating the plates. Okay, now if you have a given spacing D in between the plates, then you can figure out what maximum voltage you can apply um, to the capacitor without causing that discharge. Now this is a different constant for the material and it's known as the dielectric strength of the material. The dielectric strength is the maximum electric field that that capacitor can, that capacitor's material, that capacitor's dielectric can sustain before a spark happens and what's called breakdown happens in the capacitor. Now dielectrics do a lot for you, okay? We've already discussed how they increase the capacitance, but you can also increase the maximum operating voltage for a given geometry of a capacitor. Um, and that's because if you're just got air in between your plates, then the dielectric strength for air is a lot lower than other materials. And I'll show you a table in a second, and you can see that that's true, okay? Now, another very valuable thing that dielectrics do is they provide mechanical support between the plates. Never forget that these um, devices are something that are used in the field. They're used in your cell phones, they're used in computers, and all kinds of applications. And so they have to be able to take a little bit of wear and tear. And the capacitor provides that support in between the plates. You can imagine that if you have this capacitor with a very small spacing in between your capacitor plates, then a jarring might cause those capacitor plates to touch and short out. And so if you have an insulating material in between the plates, then that helps prevent that, okay? And it allows the plates to be close together without touching. Now, this might be a little hard to see in this graphic, and I apologize for that, but you can find the slides later and maybe zoom in. You can see here what the dielectric constants and dielectric strengths are for different materials at room temperature. These are temperature dependent for some materials, okay? 
Now remember that the dielectric constant, that's a constant in this middle column here, um, and that is the value kappa. Dielectric constant is a dimensionless quantity, okay, so it's just a, a dial, a number, okay. And then the dielectric strength, though, that's the maximum electric field that the uh, material can sustain before breakdown. And so the units of that match the uh, units for electric field, which is volts per meter and newtons per coulomb. Now, everything in this column is times 10 to the 6, so this is actually millions of volts per meter. So, for example, air here is 3 volts per meter dielectric strength, um, but if you put something in between the plates, like, say, nylon, then it increases to 14 million volts per meter, okay? So you can see that air is actually one of the lower values in this chart, and so if you put anything else in between the capacitor plates, then your capacitance goes up, or the, the amount that it can tolerate goes up. And also, the capacitance would go up because the dielectric constant for air is about 1, um, but everything else is slightly higher than that, okay? Okay, so what this allows is for a variety of geometries that you can then package and ship out to the consumer. So there's all kinds of capacitors out there. There's tubular capacitors, like is shown here, where you have a metal foil that's interlaced with thin sheets of some kind of paper or plastic, and then they're rolled into a package. Um, if you've got a really heavy duty application um, that needs a high voltage, you might have an oil filled capacitor like the one shown here where it's um, got these plates that are interwoven and then suspended in silicon oil, silicon oil. You might have an electrolytic capacitor, which is used to start, store large amounts of charge at low voltages. Um, so you might have that. It's a metallic foil um, and it's in an electrolyte inside a case. Or you might have something like this. This is an old school variable, a variable capacitor. And what you would do here is you have these um, interwoven sets of plates and then you rotate. You generally have some kind of screw that you rotate and it changes the, um, the, the geometry of the capacitor when you turn the screw. All right, let's do an example problem here. In this problem, we are determining the capacitance and the maximum possible voltage before breakdown for a Teflon filled parallel plate capacitor that has a plate area of 1.75 square centimeters and a plate separation of 0.04 millimeters. And um, we're reading off the table basically. Note that the dielectric constant is 2.1 for Teflon and then it's 60 times 10 to the sixth volts per meter for the dielectric strength as I show on the next page. So here's how you do it. Um, this is a pretty straightforward example, um, which is nice for our first discussion of dielectrics. Um, remember that our parallel plate capacitor has the equation epsilon naught A over B. And then to find the capacitance with the dielectric, you just multiply that times the dielectric constant kappa. So plugging in for all of those things for this problem, we have uh, kappa is 2.1, epsilon naught is 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 in SI units. The area of the plates was 1.75 square centimeters, and the distance in between the plates was 0.04 millimeters. So plugging that all in and doing unit conversion when necessary, up here up top, for example, I said that um, you've got 1.75 square centimeters, and I had to convert that to meters to be consistent across. So uh, one meter, uh, 100 centimeters, and then you square that unit. And when you do all that, um, plugging all that in, you end up with a capacitance of 81.3 picofarads. So that's our capacitance of our little parallel plate capacitor. Now, the question said, let's go back and look. Um, let's see, the maximum possible voltage before breakdown, okay, for a Teflon-filled parallel plate capacitor. Now, remember that the dielectric strength what that gives you is the maximum electric field that it can sustain, okay? Now, what we have here is a parallel plate capacitor. Remember that the relationship in between voltage and electric field is that the delta, the change in the voltage is equal to the negative integral of E dot dS over the path. Well, the electric field points straight in between the capacitor plates for a parallel plate capacitor, and that's also the displacement that you would be walking over. So the magnitude of the voltage that you could get would be the magnitude of the electric field times the plate separation. So that would be E max times D. Now E max is the dielectric strength of the material, which would read off that table, right? It's the material property, which is the maximum electric field that can be sustained before breakdown. 
So plugging in for Emax our dielectric strength, that's 60 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter for Teflon, which I read off the table. And then I'm multiplying that times the distance in between the capacitor plates. And that gives me uh, 60, point, 60 times 10 to the 6 times 0.04 times 10 to the minus 3. When I multiply those two things together, I get 2400 volts. Okay? So that's how you handle um, simple capacitor problems. That gives you a, a brief introduction to dielectrics. If you have any questions, I hope you let me know, and I'll see you in class.